And one of the things that I say when you're handling marriage, the beauty about marriage is realized when you discover on how you enjoy the roses and you manage the thorns. Because every rose has a thorn. It's the art of enjoying the roses and managing the, the thorns. The greatest challenge we have for us in marriage is that uh, you want to relate with the total man 100% or the total woman 100%. But you know there are areas in your husband or in your wife that are not meant for you to relate with. Do you know there are areas in your husband or in your wife that you are not meant to relate with? Are we together? The challenge is that we want to interact with our spouses 100% of their own being. But if you're going to enjoy marriage, you must choose what you interact with from your spouse. Because there are areas that are meant for God. There are areas that are meant for God and God alone to relate with him or her, to interact with him. Na areas zingine kama hajakuwa na yakoma in those areas they are not for you to mature your spouse because only God can change a human being the challenge in marriage is that when you want to change each other you are taking the role of the holy spirit and you're not are we together that's why we are struggling because there is an area for God there is an area for the Holy Spirit, and there is an area for the great high priest. But because you want to interact with that person a hundred percent, then you get yourself into a problem. Because you cannot even interact with yourself effectively. Your spirit, soul, and body, you're still struggling to reconcile yourself. No wonder you are stressed. No wonder you go through anxiety. No wonder you get angry. You have not even been able to balance the faculties that God has given you as a person, the spirit, soul, and body. And because man from the beginning was created to dominate the earth, yeah? The Bible says in Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 26, 27, let us create man in our own image and likeness. Male and female, he created, he, them. And God gave them the power to dominate over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every creeping thing that creepeth on the face of the earth. So man from the beginning was created to dominate. But to dominate what? Let's go back to the reference. It is the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every creeping thing that creeps on the face of the earth. Now, because we are not able to dominate over the fish, the birds, and the creeping things, we want to dominate over each other, therefore abandoning the sole responsibility of taking charge of ourselves. And that's why many marriages are dying because of the pursuit of controlling each other. But the ability for control is not for each other. It is for the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every creeping thing that creeps over the face of the earth. Amen. If you are sitting next to your husband or your wife, can you give them a high five and tell them, you are not created to dominate over me. I want to talk to us on building a strong marriage relationship. Building a strong marriage relationship. And I want to begin by saying that marriage was God's idea. It is God who builds marriage. It is God who began that idea. It is He who is able to sustain it. It is Him who gives us the power to continue. Tunelawana. Tunelawana Yameni. It is His idea. It is not a Muzungu idea. It's God's idea. It is God who said in Genesis chapter number 2 and verse number 18. 
It is not good for this man to be alone. I will create for him another help meet. Are we together? Amen. A helper that is suitable, that is compatible, that is good for him. Are we together? I always imagine, now I can give this example because I'm talking to couples. I would imagine that Adam is naming the animals. And I said, who you need? Dog with GK, who you need? Dog with human. Tunelona. Hippo GK, Tunelona. This is male, this is female. And as they are going after being named, we all know that the first place we see sex is in animals. Our first orientation with sex, you know, you know, you know, those kind of things. And I'm looking at these animals going, having their own good time, and Adam is alone. <laughs> and psychologically, yeah, a man erects after every five seconds, if all matters held constant, he's healthy. Five seconds. Yes. Murabi to Hana stress, to Nelwana. And the Kula Mizuri, to Nelwana. And the five is in Kazi, Gumungumu, and in five seconds, you go good to go. And the animals are going and going there. So, and as as Ada is watching them raising their thingy, even he, the gadget is going. And then God looks at this man, you know, this is him for male, female, and then they believe, you know, and then they <laughs> And then God looks at it and says, it is not good. <laughs> it is not good for this man to be alone. This gadget needs a socket. <laughs> that we handle our marriages with a lot of value with a lot of honor we value each other and that's why there is no institution in the bible that has been given the redemptive value apart from marriage no wonder Ephesians chapter number five in Asema ya kwamba husbands love your wives as Christ loves the church everything that has to be given an example with Jesus Christ is something that has a redemptive value. Are you together? So the seriousness of marriage is seen in the synonymous of what God would want to represent marriage with a church. It's nothing, love. And this is what I keep on saying. We are attracted to each other by eros love, which is sexual love, if you read the Bible, anybody in the man in the Bible who wanted a wife, he wanted a wife to sleep with. Yeah. Yeah. When Jacob is working for Rachel so that he can enter into, if you read the scripture very well, after seven years in Asia, Anamambia Laban, Anamambia, give me now my wife so that I can enter into. That's how the Bible uses that language. Yeah. When Bathsheba has gotten a baby with David and the baby dies, the Bible says that when David decides that he's not continuing to mourn anymore, he goes and confronts Bathsheba and enters into her. Well, as if you will. Amen. If you read the Bible, somebody will be there, this is a is to have some more Biblia. Mahini, the first thing that attracts to each other is not female love. It is not agape love. It is the eros love. Are we together? But we are attracted by the eros love. But what keeps us in marriage is not the eros love. It is the female love as you grow towards the agape love. You grow your friendship. You grow your non-conditional love for each other. The problem is that most of us are still stuck at the eros. You don't talk, you don't care, you don't value each other. You just want to see that girl or Kanyanga Kama motorbike. And she 
nahitaki kutoka nje unapiga magoti na muita Mungu ayaoa mbinguni bwana asifiwe <laughs> You think we don't want to sleep as we are sleeping we would want to cuddle and just be in there but now after that you gone you gone Bwana <laughs> asifiwe So if you're going to build a strong marriage relationship we must understand that the author is God yeah. and not us. Yeah. So when I deal with my husband I'm dealing with him in the fear of God because I know it is not the author of marriage it is God. Are we together? Yeah. So as I honor him it is not conditional on how he is treating me I am doing it as I'm to the Lord because this thing is redemptive. Yeah. Eh? In a series of promosi, wakati mefanywa katika njia zilizo sawa, ina attract nguvu za mkombozi na analeta msaada. Bwana asifiwe. So we must understand that the author is God. And that is why God is asking us to have good marriages because good marriages are a representation of the relationship of Christ with the with the church. Yeah. So when we have a bad relationship in our marriages, we have taken the picture of the relationship with God and the church and it affects our seed in following the God of heaven. Mm. Amen. So I will honor my husband. I will serve him and I, my husband's language of love is service. He loves being served. And I serve him well. Nileza kubiri baada ya mbili lakini nikienda mimi nyumbani si pasta nitampikia chakula and good food si mashakula Ah hizo ndio wa mama Nisilo na tafanya carpet sijui na nini chakula nzuri He's coming in the US and he's telling me I am missing the food in nyumbani Tunaloana kwa sababu mimi hapo jikoni nilisema hiyo mtihani nitapita hiyo nitapita bwana asifiwe sana Ya kupika vizuri ni hakuweka nyumba nzuri. Bwana asifiwe sana. Praise the name of the Lord. Because when you understand that we are dealing with each other as unto God, as a husband, as a husband, you don't deal with your wife as a Giriama. You don't deal with your wife as a Luo or Naguya. You deal with your wife as scripture demands because you know and you understand you are answerable to God. So even if this God is not lovable and they are Guys that are not lovable. Kwa sababu yeye yeah, sana na akiongea ongea constantly. You don't even understand shida inatoka wapi paka ta 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 you know instead of being a wife you are a knife. Anytime you talk unakata. Ukiongea hapa unakata. Ukiongea huko una unakata. But you know as a man when you understand the word of God you love her as the Bible requires. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You wash her by the water of the word. Jesus Christ is washing his own church by the water of his word. So, when you build your marriage on that understanding that the author is God, then you wash her by your own words. You talk nice things to her. Men do not or women in marriage do not respond to tongues. Are we together? You don't respond to tongues. Please respond to baby. I love you. Do you know what? When you say that this food is, I mean together. Yani una shuka, una wacha ukiro kwando, kwando. Because when you marry, it's not a mission ground. Are you hearing me? Marriage is not a mission ground. Marriage is where we practice the work that we have learned from the church. We practice patience. We practice uh, long suffering. We practice endurance in marriage. Marriage is a ground whereby we download the word. Tunaanza kuishi pale nyumbani. Watoto wanahubiriwa na matendo yetu kwa sababu ya vile tunatendeza neno la Bwana katika mahusiano yetu. Bwana asifiwe. Mother, are you hearing me? Yes. You have a school, a school, 30 days, you 45 days, 
of prayer and fasting of you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know you fast because of humbling yourself. So depending on how proud you are, you can fast as long as you because fasting does not change God. It is meant to humble you. So you can choose to humble yourself naturally so that you don't need to be fasting 50 days. You get me? Because you have already allowed the word of God to work in you. When you get a cable on the foot, you fool on the left of your mother. and expect your son to get married to a good wife. Because whatsoever a man soweth, so shall they. You cannot mess, 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 mess up na muschana wa wenyewe. Tunelawana. Na expect muschana wako ataolewa na wanamume mzuri. Girls get married by the type of their fathers and boys marry the type of their mothers. One time I was in the US and we were having a round table dinner. And as a counselor, of course, I told Muniza Kijana, what's your name? What are you doing in school? What do you want to do after school? And one boy said, I want to get married. I'm like, oh, what character are you looking for marriage? Akasema, I would want to get married to a woman who looks like mom. Because I love the way mom has sat on dad, the way he's so, she's so in charge, she's controlling the affairs of the home. And when the mother had that, Akaanza Kulia, na Naika to another chamber. So I followed the mother, and said, why are you crying? So I didn't know that all along, that as I have handled my husband, my son is watching, and he want to be to marry a woman like me. So and the question is, iyo maisha unaishi na mke wako? The life you are living, would you want your daughter to be married by a man like you? And if you are a mother, would you want your son to marry a woman? <laughs> Can you ask your neighbor, who are you? <laughs> and is the life that we are living anything that we would want to pass on to the next genera generation? Because our generation is watching. And what we are seeing with the Gen Z is the generation that we have been able to make ourselves. It's nothing to do with the government. It is all to do with us, the things that we have done. And because when our total will go katika jamia, burugu, kelele, na violence, you know, na katoto kana toka kana kwa TV, kana simamia, askari kana sana, niguze, niguze, kusababu gani, that is not violence, ya campus. Metoka yumbani? Ime kita mizizi kutoka wapi? Kutoka nyumbani, bwana aswe sana. Number two, if you are going to build strong marriages, we need to put God at the center of our marriages. We need to put God at the center 
of our marriages. Unless, this is Psalms 127, the Bible says that unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in in vain. Verse number two. It is vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. For he gives to his beloved sleep. Behold, children are heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. And like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Look at this. If we are going to build a strong marriage relationship, we must put God at the center of our marriages. Because unless the Lord builds a house, whoever builds it is actually doing it in in vain. How do you sort out your conflicts? When God is at the center of it, you want to go back to the Bible and understand what does the word say when I've been offended by my husband or by my brother. The Bible says, first talk it out with that person before you get another person as a witness. Are we together? But some of us, when we have uh, offended each other, you make your husband a prayer item. In every woman meeting, you go. Because you not be able <laughs> to talk it out with him. Praise the name of the Lord. But as if you were, when God is at the center of a marriage, you're so careful on how you talk to each other. You're so careful on your, how you value each other. When God is at the center of a marriage, the beliefs, the values that lead that family, they are godly values. It's not a home controlled by the mother-in-law. Nisiyati mother-in-law kuna shida. Ukiingia mahali kuna shida ya mother-in-law na daughter-in-law. The first thing you need to check out and know is that this is an abandoned woman who was abandoned by the husband and is looking for a hero in the sun. And because she cannot control the husband, the easiest person to control is who? It's a son. We call it the mother-son syndrome. And when the son does not understand, when he becomes of maturity to leave, and cleave, then he entertains the control of the Then you set the two women together against each other. Because you are that selfish not to divide them and keep everybody at their own place. So you share love with your mother but you come and sleep with your wife. So you keep on calling her, Mama, where is you? With a smile that your wife has never seen. When I see you, eh? Muko je uko, na uje, wei uliza muke wako, muko je, unamuliza ko, umefika? Mikama kondo ungu wacho umefika hako inti. Uko hapi? Eh, tulelana. Watoto wana chakula hapo mawaza hivo. You know, it's just instruction. You're like a commander in chief. In an army, you are just giving instruction. Go, come, da, da. Then, when you're calling mommy, you're like, Hey, mom, it's been long. Nendele aje. Afi hako hiko aje. Na hata mke wako ujai muliza hafi yake hiko aje. Anaboje kaka, anapona. Bila wewe kujua. Kwa sababu hata kikuambia, it's not a priority. Wala asifiwe. But when God is at the center of that marriage, you know that you need to honor mama. She needs your honor. She needs your support. 
She needs your encouragement, but you love your wife and you honor your mother. Amen. And you see where your father is, is where you're going to be the next 10 years. from the beginning. Praise the name of the Lord. Make God the center of your marriage. When you hit the bottom rock of marriage, call unto God. I was telling the pastors, I love my husband because when we have re reached to the rock bottom, both of us have very strong personalities. Very strong personalities. So, I swear. Now, see, there are many because of your own Nasikizana, you know, I will be through our own Nasima Kokuna Moya Mandazim. There must be disagreement. It's how you sort of disagreement when they, they come up. But one thing I love about my husband is that when they have those disagreements, he will hold my hand and pray. And he prays for himself, he prays for me. And he tells God, help me to be the husband that Monica is looking for. And it is in prayer. <laughs> if he is asking for repentance, and a kuku kwa maomi, and a sama mungu ni sameheh, kwa kababi hile vipu si juu, Monica 
anaita anahitaji naweza kuwa nimemuumiza na naomba unisaidie kumuelewa let me tell you if you are going to guma and you hear your husband praying like that you will break hata yeah. utasema muongee baadaye kuhusu hiyo maneno hiyo maneno inaishia wapi kwa Bara asifiwe. When God is at the center of our marriages, prayer becomes a priority. Praise the name of the Lord. The study of scriptures becomes a priority. Amen. Amen. Marriage is a place where God expects us to die for each other for it to be able to function. The challenge is we think that marriage gives us life. Yes, but only when you are dead. The only way to embrace the power of resurrection is in taking fellowship in the death. Philippians 3:10. That I may fellowship in the death of our Lord Jesus Christ so that I can be able to enjoy that resurrection. Most of us want to enjoy life in marriage without dying. But the only way to survive in your marriage is dying. You must die to your own privileges. You must die to your own hidden agenda. You must die to yourself. Hebu muangalie Adam wakati Eve alikuwa anatengenezwa, God had to put Adam into a deep sleep and out of it he was able to get a rib. The Bible says and he made eh he made in Genesis chapter number 3 from verse number 15. Nasema and he made out of actually not 15. I think it's Genesis 3 half of verse Tunaona? Is it? I think it's 2:18. Yeah, it's 2:18. It's 2:18. It's 2:18. Tunaona? He brings the man to sleep and out of his rib he makes a a woman. A woman is bara. The Greek word there is bara. Yaani it's fashion. Ametengenezwa kitu kizuri. Tunaona? A man is created but a woman is fashion. And a man is created but a woman is fashion. It's made, and that is why women has a shape, men do not. Ushayo na mwana ume na kinyasa? Wana asifiwe. I look at my husband, and I'm like, okay. Eh, na wana? Bene te kwa saying, Sometimes I'm not getting along here, 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 saying here, here. So now I'm going to wear it your waist, and it just me. It depends with the trouser. But the woman, the woman is special. Something beautiful. You have the dashboard, the supporting document. What has it been? Unless God is at the center of our relationship, marriage can become hard. You need to die. There are things, I keep on saying, we enter into marriage with our two eyes wide open. But for you to survive in there, you need to close one. <laughs> the expectations when we are getting into marriage are very high. But if you are going to stay there, that's a more Expectation. One has share sana. Because the loving man is not the loving husband. Men are task oriented and he can love until that task is over. When that project is over, it is over. It is over. And that's why he doesn't keep on telling you, I love you. I've not seen you for some time. Mm -mm. And Marisa. Bana asifiwe. Ama atakuambia nilikuambia mara ya kwanza na sijabadilisha. Nikibadilisha nitakuambia. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Psalms 26 and verse number 3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. The beauty about putting God at the center of our marriages is that Even when there is turbulence, 
Stones zitakuwa ndoa dharuba jiu na sikia kelele aka mulali na mkiongea msikilizani kwa sababu shetani ameimba nyaya za mawasiliano huyu anasema hivi huyu anasikia hivi let me tell you if god is at the center of your marriage even in that stormy moment because your trust is in the lord he is going to give us peace because our eyes are fixed on him praise the name of the lord number three. We are going to build a strong marriage. We're going to bring you a strong marriage. Number three, you need to check on the foundation. You need to check on the foundation. The strength of every building is on the foundation. People spend so much on the foundation because they know the longevity of any house is on the foundation. Now, what is the foundation of your marriage? Some of us, our marriages are sex driven. They're sex driven. Muko tu pale, jiwa kono. Muki ongea, muno ongea na jiwa. Kuhusu si anoyenu. At least na jiwa muno ongelesha na oa tuto wa mendiwa school fees. Nini, we call that instrumental communication. Whereby you are speaking things that must be done, but they don't have anything to do with the two of you. The only thing that is remaining in the two of you, ni? Sex. Are we together? Yeah. And we're not organized sex. We like you know though. You don't have answer. We are going to have to kill out of my way. You feel the way you are sick when you are sick. You come now. You are going to have a piluka. Some of our marriages are driven by avoidance. You have other real issues. If you can work at your school fees, you have a mute. You have a mute capis. How will I make it? If you can work at your majuku, you have a nyumba. Kueka nyumba sawa sawa kama mama. You just either become violent or totally withdrawn. And you manipulate that environment completely with silence. Muziaki kuangalia tu hivyo najua leo ni kubaya. He cannot ask a question. For the sake of his peace, you would rather be quiet. And you think your husband is humble. Not that he is humble. Just go to the marketplace. Ukute na nyana kana watu wa naongea, naongea five years strategic plan. Eh? Yeye yeye ndio tegemeo la wazee katika mtaa. Lakini akiingia kwa kwa mute. Because you must be quiet to survive in there. Because you have manipulated that house as a woman with silence and noise. When you don't want anything you nakasirika bila uwezi kuzika. What environment is in your home, by the way? Hmm? Are you Proverbs 24, verse number 3 and 6. Through wisdom, and this is the last one that I'll finish on this and give us some time to ask questions for 15 minutes before we do the other one. Is that okay? Foundations. Now Proverbs 34 verse number 3 and 6, the Bible says, Through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. That means that it is beautiful. It's a beautiful place. Eh? It's a beautiful place. You go to a home. Have you ever gone to a home and you see beauty? You see beauty. Because 
the way it has been built, and I'm not talking about the construction, uh, but the way the people live, the peace in there. Tunaona? Upendo, zile akitafutilia. Unaona hii kapo inaelewana. Tunaona? You get me? So, it's beautiful. All oh, the houses are beautiful because the environment is like a seedbed. One thing in the environment is like a seedbed where the seeds of their womb can grow and be nurtured in peace. Because the woman as a homemaker understands her responsibility in the spiritual. So she has created a spiritual environment at home that is so peaceful hmm. that when the children come in, they are at peace. When the husband comes in from work, he is at peace because the environment does not look violent. Have you gone to homes whereby the, the environment looks violent? Unaingia kwa nyumba na shingo ni mimi nimekuja na hii kitu ama wanapaka hivi. Praise the name of the Lord. A house is built by wisdom and by understanding. A house is not built by love. It is used, it's built by wisdom and wisdom is the application of knowledge. So in other words, in your life experiences, you have acquired knowledge that you have intentionally applied to be a wise person. Yes. And this is where Christianity, we have a problem. Our friends from the other mother, they live their Islamic faith. We do not live our Islam, our Christian faith. We live it on Sunday. Lakini wala watu wanaishi dini yao. Sisi ya tutishi dini ya ukristo. Are we together? There is a gap in the knowing and in the doing. But wisdom is the application of the knowledge. And by understanding, a house is established. A wise man is strong. Yes. A man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel, you will wage your own war. And in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. You need knowledge for you to build a strong marriage. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Knowledge. If you're going to have a strong marriage relationship, you need to know something. Something. You need to understand your spouse. You need to understand the personality of your spouse. What is his personality? What is his love language? There are five love languages. Do you know your spouse? Love? Love language. Mina yo mawango na penda service, na na penda affirmation. So mahali popote, lazima ni mutaje. Kwa sababu na patia huduma. When I affirm him, I'm ministering to him. Yeah. Are we together? I serve him because that is his love language. My love language is touch and quality time. I need quality time and divided attention. The challenge of us in marriage is because you do not know your wife or your husband, you've been doing everything right in your own eyes, but she's still complaining. Because you are loving her, miss. So na yenga nyumba. Na mbezi ni mekujengea. Nini ningino rataka? Ataki nyumba. Anataka wewe. Tinaona. Wale wa mama wa mekoma. Na wale wa mama hawana roho ya ukahaba hawatafuti mali kwa ndoa wanatafuta mtu. Binafsi wewe hiyo ingine ni matabia ya Madelaila. They are the ones who look for things. But genuine married women are not looking for things. They are looking for that man. Bara sasa sana. But men are busy looking for all these other things thinking they are looking for their wives and for the family, it's only because your father didn't have them. So we, comp we call it compensatory behavior. You are trying to outdo your father. <laughs> and in outdoing your father, you actually destroy your own marriage. Have you ever seen fathers who buy toys and toys and toys and the children think they are buying toys for the children? Ara 
as well. Amen. We need knowledge. Look at your neighbor, tell them uh, we need knowledge. We need knowledge. You need to understand the personality of your spouse so that you do not have to interact with everything in your husband. If you see a marriage whereby, you know, two circles, zinaka kama zimeingiliana because mumeingiliana kabisa is a clinical issue. A healthy marriage is whereby the two cycles, mnakuja kukutania mahali hapa katikati. You have another percentage about yako, na ye hako na yake, and there is what you share together. Are we together? You must enjoy singleness in the marriage and still enjoy interdependence on one another. Yeah. When both of you become so interdependent, one of you is sick in what we call the codependent behavior. You cannot survive on your own. And those are the people when a husband dies and a woman a kichwa. For Sabahu, they were codependent together. So the children cannot continue going to the schools they went when the father was alive because the mother was a parasite. But I see you. What a joy. What a joy if my 60% is in the corporate world. My husband, 60% is in the corporate world. When we come together to enjoy the 40% from each other, it's a rich 80%. Yeah. A very rich 80%. Yeah. That's why there are meetings. I'm invited with my husband and we say we cannot go together because it's a waste of family resources. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mafatana, Kwamatana, and Akira Mutu Muko, while we see Akira Mutu Muko, the Yukuna Shukuni, Yami Kuman, the Siba Bone Yote, so who make you funga instead of spoiling the world, bringing the resources to the house, and you think that is unity. It's not unity. Who are any? What is the name of who are any? I keep on saying. It's okay to be full time, but me, I want to do both. When I see a son, I want to do both. Nay, many patia and shimazan. When I see fewer, in our church, I am the best giver. From January to August, I provided tea and manazi for every member in our church after the sons. When I see fewer. When I see fewer. I was able to raise money for our PA to the tune of 600,000 and I was a key giver. Wow. Are we together? Yes. So what am I saying? Ngwaneni. Mwami Jaliya, Ngwaneni. Mzee, wacha kufunga mama. If you see a man that does not want the wife to work, has a problem with security. I don't ask money for 
Ujipange nako anaenda kukunwa supu ya kichwa na mkate. Bara shi sana. Look at your neighbor and we need knowledge. The Bible says in Hosea, eh? Hosea 4:6 my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being a priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Can you imagine? Let me say this. Do you know prayer does not cancel ignorance? Hmm? Prayer does not cancel ignorance. You need to understand how to behave. When your human woman goes mute, you need to understand how to behave when your husband comes home and he doesn't want to talk. You need knowledge. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. You need to understand what kind of women talk or how to deal with it. So let me tell you, when you have knowledge, kila kila mukisha wako akili, we we pare ni kapo ni bouncing back capacity ato ya kuweza kucheza tu pare mule juwa hiki tu is an example that I am a millionaire I'm only learning with the time I'll get out of it knowledge praise the name of the Lord you need knowledge to handle your husband when he is under stress so that you don't become another stressor wakati mzee anaongea na wazo mama wacha kumsukumia atiniambie umetoka wapi umetelewa live your life